Hello everyone, this is Ferris. And this is Caleb Flanoy, and welcome to another episode of Conversations with the Home Care Guys. <laughs> you sound like Oprah, man. <laughs> like Oprah. Oprah. Oprah is the queen of talk shows, Oprah so man. guess what? We're going to be the kings of our podcast. Yeah, exactly, that? exactly. She started off in the 90s, we started off in the 2000s. So. Come on, oh my the goodness. 80s. She started in the 80s, actually. Yeah, oh, you know, the Oprah show was a great show. Yeah. I used to watch it as a child. Mm-hmm. Every time he used to come in at what time? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. I'm telling you, four o'clock, Oprah C. See, see, Oprah, I did not never, I never knew that I was going to be here in front of the camera. Wow, it's and same for you, probably. Exactly. No, never even considered this, like realizing that we're on the same set that Oprah's on. <laughs> well, we created our own set, so this is like a little Harpo Studio situation. <laughs> Oprah, we here. Exactly. <laughs> well, I want to talk about today. We're in the month of November, Ferris. Yes. Uh, what are you thankful for? Let's. That's our. That's a little bit segue before we get into our conversations. Yeah, what man. are you thankful for? Oh man, again, like brother, like. As I reflect back on, especially this past year, and so many people have went through so much with COVID and Mm. lost some family members, lost jobs, gaining jobs, gaining new family members. I have so much to be thankful for. Uh, First thing I'm thankful for is definitely throughout this experience, my wife and I having our very first son, our only son, um, that's something to be thankful for. um, And just for life, for health, for our strength, just Mm. being able to have the ability to go through and actually serve others. I'm very thankful and grateful for that as well. What are you thankful for, man? Right. I'm thankful for the basics like I'm thankful for life having a roof over my head you know a car to drive um, clothes you know not really stressing out you know I I believe a lot of families did go through as they went through COVID loss of jobs and things of that sort a lot of families were stressing and so I'm I'm glad that God allowed us to be a blessing to some of those families um, as well as uh, as as well as keep all of our our team members employed and keeping them happy we didn't have to do any layoffs thank thank God and we didn't have to we just we really expanded God allowed us because I I think he saw our hearts yeah he saw our hearts that we were hard we were giving hearts and and so he didn't allow our business to fold. He yeah. allowed us to continue to grow and yeah. expand. And so I'm just thankful for that. I'm thankful for my mom. My mom is a yes. hardworking lady and um, my families, my sisters, my brothers. I'm just thankful for it. Yeah. everything. Thankful for the small things. Yeah, man. And I think those are the things right there is being just thankful for those daily things and have a, a heart of gratitude. Actually, um, it just it, it, it serves humanity well. And also it serves, I think, just us well as well. Right. And I think, um, brother, like that's one thing where I realized that just like you said, even throughout the COVID experience, being able to just kind of grow and expand our organization to serve others, right. that's actually inv- important. I think that's, that kind of leads into the conversation that we're having on today. We're going to be talking about three things to consider before expanding your business. So yes. again, three things to consider before expanding your business. And these are principle based things that are not just geared towards home care or home health care, but these are things to consider before you expand in any business, before any you actually, business, business principles, before right. you take it out your house, before you go to the next state or whatever it is, these are things to consider, Kayla. So this and, is what and, we're going to get. And Ferris, I want to say this, our mindset, what well, my mindset before then before uh before now Mm -hmm. has been really really different i didn't even follow these principles and so now what i know now we are taking these principles and we're making sure that we um keep them next keep them glued to our hip yes because these are really really great three things to consider before you want to expand in any business exactly exactly so the first thing you want to go through and consider is what is your true reason why you want to expand right i think so many times people see the person to the left or to the right just expand and grow and i want to expand and grow mm-hmm. i want to expand and grow but you have to go through and actually ask yourself why do you desire to expand what is your intention behind it and i know one of our intentions behind expanding was to go through and serve more customers because we realized that especially throughout the pandemic phase that many people were lacking services right many people had to cut their services off because they didn't have enough caregivers or there were not enough services provided in a certain area right so we our heart was to go through and serve others and that's why we actually started expanding and looking for opportunities where there was a need exactly and I think that's one thing that became our why is how can we feel the need that's out there not how can we just kind of grow and grow and grow right. but how can we feel feel the need that's out there. And I, I think with the serving of others fairs, because uh, w- w- when, when you get licensed through the state of Georgia, I think they give you up to like 10 counties to service. And so we we knew that as we, we were faithful with the serving serving those 10 counties um, for a long period of time. And so we realized that now that we really wanted to expand and go into different markets because we want to help others in different markets that we couldn't even help. And so that was one of the, that was one of the whys. Another why that we, we did was we were attracting great leaders yes. within our organizations. And so 
in order to attract those leaders, we wanted to make sure that there were room for them to grow and there wasn't a cap on what they could make. And yeah. so that was another reason for us to expand. We wanted to uh, give them the opportunity and the sense of that you can grow within this organization, yeah. which you can. And yeah. so and th th there's a uh, it's bad when when only the owners are the only one growing. And so you want to make sure that and for your team members that there's elevations and the room for growth. Yes, and that's that's very important, Caleb. And I think another reason why we actually um we we expanded when we expanded was because we realized that we had a blueprint. We had developed a blueprint. We've actually had something that was tested and tried and realized that this was starting to work. Right. For so many years, again, we've been in business for almost what 15 years. Yeah. And so for so many years, we were kind of understanding and learning the blueprint and developing the blueprint and kind of following different processes. And at the right time, we realized that, okay, these are the systems that's working because we have the right team. Right. We have the right individuals on the team. And now it's time to go through and actually see if this can be duplicated to another area. And I think that's one thing that allowed us to go through and actually put an intention on why we can expand. Because just like you said, we want to create other opportunities for people to grow within our organization. Right. But we realized that just servicing local in these initial 10 counties, they were going to be capped on where they can grow. So we decided to shatter the glass ceiling right. and said, you know what, we're going to be expanding to this city or that city or this part of the um, the, um, the the state. And that allowed for individuals to grow as well. Well, I definitely feel that the the, the number one reason of why, um, of expansion should be the, definitely the why. Mm -hmm. Why you wanted to. So we went over those components of, you know, about um, uh, creating the more growth opportunities for your, um, for your employees. Uh, we talked about those other things that Ferris mentioned as well, which was um, um, serving more customers as well as we thought we had a blueprint. But I can recall, especially when we were, um, when I was pretty much leading the organization starting off, I remember, I remember Ferris, um, I didn't take any of those factors into mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. Now we do because we still expand mm -hmm. and we take all of those factors about the growth and everything like that. But when I was leading the organization, um, my ambition, I was so laser focused. You know, I, I was like, oh, um, we got our home care license. I want to expand. I want to grow. I want to grow, 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 grow to um to make to serve as more people and so i remember um when we did an expansion i opened up three offices in one in less than 20 for 12 months mm -hmm. and so i did an office in macon i did an office in thompson and then i, I did an office way over there in villa Rica, georgia do you yeah. remember that paris what were you thinking <laughs> i don't know what I, what I was thinking so i didn't count up the cost i didn't do anything mm -hmm. but i i knew that i wanted to expand and so i did an office in villa Rica, and i can remember we had state auditors so that's when that was definitely way before COVID. um um we had state auditors to come to those offices and I lived in Millersville yes and so Millersville is probably like two hours and 45 minutes away from Villa Rica mm -hmm. and so the state auditor called the office and said uh well we're getting ready to do a, a audit in your Villa Rica office and so not counting up the cost and thinking that we could do do all this span not having the the team members on yes. board or whatever which we're going to talk about later mm -hmm. um it put a lot of stress on us yes. and so please consider these three things yes. figure out the why Figure out the why you want to expand, and then we're going to go over those other two. Exactly, man. That, that's actually <laughs> – I remember that. That was brother, crazy, That Paris. was a stressful time because having to go through and commute three hours right. uh, just to go through and sit in the office. For a couple of hours, yeah. For a couple of hours. Right. It, was, it, was, it was horrible. <laughs> but, man, again, but th this, this, this is why we're giving these three steps so you can go through and actually avoid some of the same mistakes that we made as well. So this is going right. to kind of take us into our next topic is – this is actually, you have to go there and ask yourself, do you have the necessary team? Right. Do you have the necessary tools? Do right. you have the necessary talent? And do you have the necessary time to expand? Because I think it's so many times where you may have a little bit more time, but you may not have the team. Or you may have the tools, but may not have the talent. Or you may have the, the tools and the talent, but may not have the time. And I think it's so important to go through and actually consider all four of those um, T's in to, when considering expanding as well. Because when it comes to actually developing a team it takes time Caleb. it does it, it does. takes time and when it comes to developing a team that you can go through and trust and that's going to have your back it takes time but it does alleviate a lot of stress when it comes to expanding as well i i think that when you're developing a team you have to be a great delegator yes you have to delegate and so i realize especially leading the organization leading different departments that you can't do everything yourself Correct. you know so you and and it's going to give you by delegating it's going to give you the opportunity to identify who 
does what well and who does who needs a little bit more improvement yes. in those areas. And so as you build a team, which um, which we're doing a solid team now at Prime because amazing. We have a great, great team. Yes. You have to be a great delegator. And so uh, you have to delegate, delegate, delegate. And so figuring out uh, the team is so important and delegation is so important when you're when you're thinking about expansion. Exactly. And also when expanding, you have to go through and think about the tools as well. Let's talk about that. Right. Because your, your tools that you utilize, you have to go through and see, okay, if it worked right here locally or worked right here in this per- particular area that I'm at, that I'm in, will it go through and communicate at the next level? Can mm-hmm. I, can, can it be transferable in the tools, whether it be your spreadsheets, whether it be your CRM software, whether right. it be your, your phone services, these are things that you must consider. And you have to think about that prior to going through and doing the expansion as well, because the worst thing to do is to get out there and sign the lease. The worst right. thing to go, go through is get out there and, and commit yourself so much financially right. without having the proper tools in place. Then you're kind of putting your, setting yourself up for failure as well. Exactly. Also, when you when you're thinking about the tools and time, you want to make sure. Do you really have the time to expand? Mm. Um, because you know, Ferris, you have a family. You have yeah. a wife and two kids. Yes. With me, I'm um, you know, I don't have a a family per se. Uh-huh. You know, and so um, I have my dog Bella. You know, so it's so so I don't really have a a a a committed like family. Uh-huh. And so you have to think about this. Or do you have the time and the and the resources? Mm. Do you have the time to communicate to to commute to two hours or three hours away? Do do you have the time to stay up and to 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 do hiring and yes. to and to learn different learn the market learn the mm-hmm. the marketing market and build relationships in, in that area you have to figure out do you have the time and that's important you know a lot of people think about they have the team and they have all this other stuff but do you necessarily have the time to really expand and grow and I Caleb, I think that goes right back to the why it's like again I think so many times people look out the window and see other people doing things but not realizing they're doing things more calculated in a calculated manner right then actually just kind of half heartedly half heartedly just going through and actually jumping and doing things. Things. I exactly. think you have to realize that because what you don't want to do is stress out your team you don't. because you are, uh, you're an ambitious entrepreneur <laughs> and you want to do this and that. So you have to go through and realize that this is where I'm called to go through and serve. Exactly. And if you're called to serve at multiple levels, I think that in time you'll learn enough to go through and do it, but only in the right time. Another another thing is uh, uh, with, with another thing that you have to consider when you're thinking about expanding is counting up the cost. Oh yes. Okay. Definitely count up the cost. I think that uh, that's so important. Mm-hmm. You want to call count up every expense from insurances to office rent to utilities to even the staff that's going to be at the office. And then one thing that I always think about is I always play the devil's devil's advocate. Whenever I'm expanding to any new new market, what if I do not get get a client mm. within the 12 within the first 12 months mm-hmm. and so would this business or would this um this new market still be able to sustain itself do we have enough reserves in the account to to uh to keep this office going for 12 months and so you have to always play devil's advocate and you always want to make sure you count up the cost to create a budget and I think just like you said, being able to have a plan in place, because I think a lot of times people, they, they, they feel because they have a plan in place. And right. I think you have to have an out as well. I think so many times in which I'm going to raise my hand in business uh, in the past, never had an out is always very optimistic in business. This business is going to work because I can go through and work and it's going to work. Right. But yeah, you know, I would just be transparent that all my businesses that I started, all of them have not succeeded. And it was because I did not have a plan in place. And I think as you go through and expand, that means you've been successful at one thing. As you expand, you want to duplicate that success. And as you expand, you have to go through and give yourself an out as well, because you may go into a market and there may be some other things that may prevent you from actually being as successful as you may think you are right. or could be. And I think then that's where you have to go through and have an out where you, you may go through and say, Hey, I'm going to have so many, so much money set aside and so many months to go through and do X, Y, and Z. And then if I don't achieve these goals, this is when I'm going to start scaling back. Right. And I think that's one thing as entrepreneurs, we're afraid to go through and actually throw in the, the, the throw, throw up the flag and say, Hey, I surrender or Hey, throw, throw in the towel to say, you know what? Hey, not this time, right. but you have to be confident in your ability to go through and expand, but also gracious and also equally confident in your ability to go through and actually say, okay, at this time, it may not be the opportunity for me as well. And I, another thing too, Ferris, is um, I think with entrepreneurs, especially with, with, with us, with me starting off, like I, I didn't have any fear. Yes. And, 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 and the definition of fear is pretty much um, 
turning away from a flight. And so I didn't have I, I didn't have any fear. I say, you know, it, just like uh, um, one of the uh, one of our mentors says, it has to work or it has to work. Yes. And so you have to have that mentality that it has to work or it has to work. Mm-hmm. And so um, so I didn't have any fear when it came down to expanding the business. Now, when you said that you, you do have to have a cap and you have to realize, OK, well, if something's not working to recognize it's not working to turn into towel. Great. But you also have to think about this, too. Any event that didn't work at that time is never an opportunity for, for you to not try again. Exactly. And so that if if it didn't work in this state or in this community or this area, maybe you need to try a different area right. and it will work. But sometimes we get the fear mm. of it not working here that it's not going to work anywhere else. That's true. And so I want you to realize, That's especially true. when you're expanding, I don't care if you expand your business or um, um, you're expanding to another market. If it did not work there, evaluate think mm-hmm. about what were the factors that caused it to not work were you prepared and 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 take that risk for the next opportunity when it when it does come i love it man i love it i think that's one thing as entrepreneurs we have to go through and actually manage our risk and not be afraid to take the risk because right just just like you said if it, it, it may not be now it may be later exactly it's, it's going to happen now or later for you and you have to realize and i think that's a part of the journey when right. it comes to expanding is to realize that hey doors may not open just because you go to the door and knock on it exactly but you may have to go to the next door and knock right or the next door or not. And eventually those doors are open if you don't give up as well. Exactly. So, exactly. so man, this has been a, an incredible, incredible episode. And I think that just like I said, I hope it in, inspires individuals just to go through and think about the option of expanding, especially if you've done your due diligence, done a great service, you have a quality product. Why not go through and actually take it to the next level? Why not go through and actually introduce your services to someone else who may be in need as well? Exactly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the home care guys. I I would love for you to like, share, and subscribe to our Spotify account with Conversation with the Home Care Guys. Click that notification button right there so you can be aware and attuned of all of our new episodes that are coming out. Um, And definitely, please leave a five-star review. Leave a five-star review. If you have gained any information and any value uh, from our conversations, please leave a five-star review. We will greatly, greatly appreciate it. Exactly, Caleb. Well, this has been beautiful. And until next time, we're the Home Care Guys. See you soon.